What's going on, you f <laughs> man? Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. I just love inserting my voice from time to time, okay? So, once again, exact differential equation exercise. And if you've watched the first one, you know what's going on. We are going to go by this formula at first, and then we are going to solve it in an elementary way, walking through all the steps one after another. And this right here is our sexy ass exact differential equation. Maybe it's exact, we don't know yet, okay? We have to check for exactness. This is something we have to do right here. How can we check for exactness? Well, it has to satisfy this very equation, okay? So let us go ahead and get started. So this right here is our P and this right here is our Q. My boys and girls, okay? You have a high IQ, you know what's going on. Now, del y p is nothing but, okay, cosine differentiated with respect to y is thus nothing but, oh, that's really easy, negative sine of y, okay? I know you guys can do it, you are smart people, okay? You are really smart people. Now, what is going to be right here, okay? Del x q, what's that? We are going to differentiate this thing right here with respect to x. Our x is going to vanish in the process, meaning this right here is our q, you have to include our negative sign right here. That's a little trick question, okay? <laughs> nice and tricky daddy right here. We're going to differentiate this with respect to x. This is going to vanish, that's good. x times something differentiated with respect to x is just something in itself, so negative sign, okay? That's a good thing, that's nothing but our del x q. This thing is indeed exact. Now, once again, we have to think about our region. And what you have to think about here is basically if any pair of initial values, you can say points in our rectangle that we are going to choose, are going to cause any problems for our function that we have right here. Good thing is our cosine of y and sine of y are defined for whole r, okay? They converge for each and every value in our r2, you could say, in our r. And the rest are just simple polynomials, so there's not a problem here. Once again, we can choose our region we are integrating over as the whole r2, our graph, consists of all the points in r2. Meaning, our r is the whole plane. And just like before, we are going to have a really easy time because, for example, we can choose our pair x0, y0 as nothing but 0, 0. That's the easiest thing you can choose, okay? Most of the time, a lot of stuff is going to vanish if you have, for example, simple polynomials in there, okay? So, that's a nice thing to choose and now we can actually start off and it really doesn't quite matter which formula of those two we are going to use once again. All we know is that our function f is nothing but c, which is nothing but a p integrated with respect to x, p is nothing but cosine of y, okay, integral from x not to x, so 0 to x, of um, cosine of y integrated with respect to x. And also we have q of x0, y. x0 is nothing but 0 right here. So this is going to vanish and we are going to have positive y squared that we have to integrate. So plus integral from 0 to y of positive y squared integrated with respect to y. And this right here is a really easy feat, okay? So this is just a constant, this cosine of y, we can bring it to the front and integrating just 1 is going to result in x. Okay, so we are going to have x times the cosine of y from 0 to x, just like before. This is going to vanish. If we have 0 here, that's why we choose this pair, nice and easy, lemon squeezy, okay? And if we plug x into here, that's just our x in itself, okay? Plus, this is going to give us y to the third power over 3 if we integrate this polynomial in y with respect to y. Okay, this is going to give us y to the third power over 3 from 0 to y. Once again going to vanish and all that's really left is thus our x times the cosine of y um, plus y to the third power over 3. This right here is our one parameter family of solution. Okay, I hope you can see where all of this came from. We have derived this before, we are going to use it, we are going to make extensive use of those bad boys. Now, we still have an initial value problem to solve. y of 1 being equal to 0. Well. <laughs> Easily done, right? So, meaning, every time we have a y in this equation, it's going to be zero, and our x is going to be one. So, this is going to vanish right here in the initial value problem, this part, y is equal to zero, and cosine of zero is nothing but one, okay, cool. And x is nothing but one, meaning our c 
is nothing but 1 and thus our differential equation has been uniquely determined. A cool thing, this has been making use of the formula once again. Okay, but now we are going to do it the elementary way. And it really doesn't quite matter which of those two you are going to choose yet again. We are going to start off with the p part right here, okay? Because there's not much we have right here. That's the cool thing, okay? Choose wisely, choose wisely, my boys and girls out there. Now, del xf is nothing but our cosine of y. Now, what did we do last time? We were integrating without up and lower bounds, or you can integrate freely using our initial values that we have right here. No matter what you do, it's going to turn out to be the same. Integrating both sides with respect to x. It's going to leave us with a remainder function with respect to y, okay, just like in the abstract proof. Integrating this is going to give us x times the cosine of y plus r of y. And yeah, you know the deal. We also know that this thing right here is now our f, okay? Write f to pay respect to this function. And now, what we can do, we can differentiate this function with respect to y and see what we get. This is going to be our q then, okay? Del y, f, is thus nothing but our q, but q is this right here. x times the sine of y, minus y squared. Now, um, yeah, differentiating this with respect to y is going to give us the differential of this remainder function. And also, this right here is going to give us negative the sine of y, okay? So plus x, oh, negative, negative x times the sine of y. Most of the time stuff is going to cancel out pretty nicely in the process, okay? That's the cool thing about this special kind of differential equation. Now, um, oh yeah, um, I totally forgot we had this negative sign right here. I'm terribly sorry, we have uh, Q, now I forgot it, now I'm being tricked by myself, okay? We're going to have Q being this one, but with a negative sign. I was already wondering, why is nothing cancelling out, okay? So, there was probably an annotation in the video there. So, we can add this on both sides, we can get rid of this, meaning our prime is nothing but Y squared. Now we can integrate both sides with respect to Y to get that integral of r prime dy is nothing but r with respect to y, our remainder term. And this is nothing but the integration with respect to y of y squared is y to the third power over 3. This is what we get up before. In normal case, plus some arbitrary function, it's going to vanish in the process if you do this initial value stuff right here in our region that we have. And well, now we can add this remainder term to here and you are going to see that we are going to end up with the same thing that we had right here once, okay? So this right here, we're two ways once again. Easy peasy lemon squeezy or you can just um, uh, solve this by inspection. <laughs> if you can see this function immediately, then uh, props to you, you're probably cool. If you did enjoy this video, please like, subscribe, and recommend this channel if you like, if you want to support the channel with more Vitas t-shirts I created. And I have a physical mailbox now. Send me weird shit, my boys and girls. Link in the description. No, not a link, but the address. And up until the next video, have a flamble day. See ya.